Hello everyone and welcome to the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Launch. In this video, we'll be talking about simulating longitudinal and lateral vehicle dynamics. With vehicle dynamics block set, you can calculate the longitudinal, lateral and yaw motion of the vehicle. We already have a video on getting started with vehicle dynamics block set, which introduces you to all the capabilities of the toolbox. To watch the video, please check the link that is provided in the description. In this video will specifically focus on calculating the motion of the vehicle. So how do you do this? To answer that, let's define our requirements. Let's consider an autonomous car where the aim is to drive it in a virtual environment and generate virtual sensor data. In other words, you want to conduct high-level software studies that are not impacted by driveline or non-linear tire responses. On the other hand, consider a race car where you want to do the vehicle line study based on the responses from the tire. Even though both cases have different requirements, the output requirement is the same, that is, to calculate the longitudinal, lateral, and yaw motion. Now the question is, how can you solve the vehicle dynamics equations to calculate the motion? One of the approaches is to build a model based on the equations of motion. So using the set of equation, you can write a MATLAB code or build a simulink model. Now how about set of blocks, wherein based on the requirements, you can provide the input, and calculate the motion of the vehicle along with other information such as forces and moments. But where you can find these blocks? These blocks can be found in the vehicle dynamics block set. So giving a short intro to vehicle dynamics block set, it provides fully assembled reference application models that simulate driving maneuvers in a 3D environment. The block set includes a library of components for modeling propulsion, steering, suspension, vehicle bodies, brakes, and tires. It has pre-built scenes that can be used to visualize roads, traffic, signs, trees, building, and other objects around the vehicle. It also consists of reference examples that you can customize by using your own data or by replacing a subsystem with your own model. However, in this video, we'll focus on the vehicle body library. So these are the various vehicle body blocks depending on the applications. For example, vehicle body 1 DOF longitudinal can be used when you are performing some kind of powertrain of cool economic studies and even drive cycle tracking studies. On the other hand, vehicle body 3DF dual track and single track can be used for vehicle dynamics and autonomous driving studies. Apart from that, we do have blocks for 3DF longitudinal, 6DF, and even vehicle body total road load. For this video, we'll be focusing on the vehicle body 3DF dual track. Having said that, now let's move further and understand the implementation of this block. The first task is to calculate the motion of an autonomous car where the input is steering angle and longitudinal velocity. So let's check out how we have modeled it in Simulink. From the Simulink library browser, we drag a 3DF dual drag block. When you double click the block, you have the option to select the input of the block. As we just want to maneuver the vehicle without impacted by the tire response, we'll select the longitudinal velocity as the input. The block also contains additional inputs to include in the blocks. In the block, the first input is a front wheel steering angles, which is a row or column vector of two elements for the left and right wheels. Now to get the front wheel steering angles, we'll add a kinematic steering. Now as the input to the 3D of block is an array, we'll pass the wheel angle signals through a concatenate block. We'll be driving the vehicle with a constant longitudinal velocity. Further, for changing the input steering angle, we have used a knob from the dashboard. In short, this was a procedure to show how you can easily connect blocks on Simulink to build a model. Finally, here is our final model where additionally we have added a visualization block from one of the reference examples. Now let's try to run it. Now as you can see, when I change the steering angle, the motion of the vehicle changes. Once you have this model ready, you can utilize the vehicle dynamics block set capabilities to interface it with the gaming engine and maneuver the vehicle to collect the virtual sensor data. For more information regarding this, please check the description where we have provided the links. Now let's move further to the next task where the input is steering angle and total force on front and rear wheels. Please note that the model is not built using racing car parameters. We have used the racing car image to show that this model can be implemented in such cars. So here is the model. As you can see, compared to the last model, it has two new input ports that can be added by selecting the external longitudinal forces. Here, FWF 
is an array consisting of force on the front left wheel and front right wheel. Similarly, FWR is the force on the rear wheel. Then the input signal steering angle, brake position and accelerator position are provided by the signal editor. For simplicity of the model, we have not included the tire dynamics. Instead, we have converted the positions into forces using transfer function. Now let's run the model and visualize the effect of changing the inputs on the vehicle motion. Now as you can see, when you apply the accelerator, the vehicle accelerates. Whereas, when you apply the brakes, the velocity decreases and when you steer the vehicle, you can see the yaw motion. Finally, this is the trajectory of the vehicle that we have obtained based on the input signals. Having seen a simplified model, let's add some more dynamics in the existing model. So this is the model which has been built using the scene interrogation reference example. To know more about this, please go through the video description which, where we have provided the link for the reference example. Additionally, this model consists of vectorized tire model and we have also added a simplified drivetrain and brake system. In this model, apart from calculating the motion of the vehicle, we are also interested in calculating the forces at front axle. To extract that information, you can connect the bus selector to the info port. When you go inside the bus selector, you can see that apart from getting information of the vehicle motion, you can also extract information regarding forces, moments, and even power. Now, since we are interested to find the front axle force, so we have just selected that one. So this is the signal which we have we, we, we have selected in the using the bus selector. Now let's check out what is the force at the front axle based on the input signals that is steering, acceleration and deceleration. So we have logged the data using the data inspector. Now as you can see when we apply the accelerator, the force in the x direction increase and then becomes constant. Then the moment we apply the brake, it goes to negative and further, there's a huge jump when we release the brake. Now having seen the last model, let's check out one more model where we have included the external friction. Often, we are also interested in analyzing the vehicle motion based on the road surface. For example, how will the vehicle move in when it passes over dry or wet surface? That can be done using an additional port that is the external friction port. So when you check this one, one additional port will be created in the vehicle body 3D of dual track. So to test the vehicle in wet and dry scenarios, we have created a lookup table that shows the wet and the dry surface regions. So in the plot, the yellow color represents the dry region and the blue color represents the wet region. Now in this model, apart from the vehicle motion, we are also interested in visualizing the vehicle slip angles and this info can be extracted from the info port. So now let's move ahead and check out the vehicle motion results and as well as the slip angle. So here we have compared the results when the vehicle is moving on a completely dry surface. So the vehicle starts in a dry surface and whenever it is in the wet region, it moves out and also there's a drop in the slip angle. And finally, this is a trajectory we get compared to the completely dry surface. So what we want to say is that by using these models, either you can utilize it to visualize the motion of the vehicle or you can also extract useful information from the model for further analysis. Having said that, let's check out the key takeaways. The vehicle Dynamics block set provides a standard model architecture that can be used throughout the development process. Then you have wide range of blocks that can be used to solve the vehicle dynamics equations. Also, you can extract the information from the model that can be further used for system level analysis. As usual, thank you for watching the video. Do contact us if you have any queries and check out these links for further resources.